G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Media here. Recently for our project, I've run into a very interesting problem. In my previous video, I demonstrated a breakthrough in cannon technology allowing the player's view angle to be applied directly into aiming a cannon. And one of the problems presented in that video is the limitations of aligning entities using the hitboxes that Minecraft provides. The problem being that despite there being an abundance of blocks with unique hitboxes allowing many different alignments, you are fundamentally limited to these specific alignments for any given situation. But what if you had access to a hitbox that could be positioned literally anywhere with any arbitrary positioning? Well this idea was first posited by Tuno Tuname over two years ago where he demonstrated how a combination of rail curving and pulse powered rails can be used to obtain any arbitrary position for a minecart. The reason why this is significant is that you can put a boat inside of a minecart and then the boat has a solid hitbox whose position is defined by the position of the minecart. So give the minecart some arbitrary position and the boat's solid hitbox will also have that arbitrary position. The only problem is that in his video, Tuno spends ages in an immense amount of manual effort getting to the exact position that he wants, meaning this is simply not practical as a building technique. But in the comments section of that video, a user by the name of Mirai suggests that the slope powered rail is completely redundant and any alignment should be accessible through only rail curvature. So what actually happens to a minecart on a curved rail that makes this behaviour so useful? Well a minecart is constrained to the middle of the rail but moves freely along its length. When we curve the rail, the game will interpolate the position of the minecart along a diagonal connecting the two straight segments. The result is that any position on the curved rail gets compressed to half its distance. To put it simply, when I place a minecart on a straight rail segment, it starts with its position being a 0.5 offset. If I then curve the rail, the minecart halves its displacement from the connected rails, and then I can straighten the rail to project the minecart's position back against the central axis of the straight rail segment. This means I can repeat the process with the minecart's new position and obtain a new offset. So if we curve the rail left, the distance to the left side of the rail is halved. If we curve the rail right, the distance to the right side of the rail is halved. And what we have is a binary choice, zero for left, and one for right. Now the question is, can we construct a binary sequence of moves to bring the car to any arbitrary position we choose? This leads to some interesting questions with mathematical implications, like is it possible to access any real number with the described move set? What is the minimum number of moves needed to access a particular alignment to some precision? And can this process be automated with a machine that is practical to build? At first it isn't obvious how to answer these questions, like how do we begin to translate a decimal number into a sequence of ones and zeros to describe the move set? Well we can start by changing the way that we look at our numbers. The result we want is in binary, so it makes sense to record the position of the minecart in binary as well. We use a binary decimal format where the first bit to the right of the decimal point represents 2 to the power of minus 1, which is exactly a half. This is the initial position of the minecart on the rail. Note what happens when we curve left. We simply divide by 2, which in binary means a bit shift. So 0 0.1 becomes 0 0.01. Every time we curve the rail left, we shift every bit in the sequence to the right. From this position, if we then curve right, we halve the distance between our current position and 1 which results in a bit shift plus the addition of a half. You can see this from the fact that 0.01 shifts over into 0.001 and we also add a half in the form of a 0.1 at the start of the sequence. Let's say we want to build the binary representation of 0.8. Curving left or right both perform a bit shift. However, the difference is that curving left fills our sequence with zeros and curving right fills our sequence with ones. So what we need is a combination of the two that recreates our target sequence. We recognize that the most significant bit of our position sequence must move over and become the least significant bit of our target sequence. 
To fill in the rest of the sequence, we skip the least significant bit and simply read the target sequence backwards to create our move set. And this lands the minecart on the exact position we set out to replicate. So can we access any real number? Well, it depends. Note how I denoted that 0.8 was only approximately equal to the target sequence. This is because 0.8 in base 2 demands an infinite amount of bits to represent fully. This is similar to how a rational number like 1 divided by 3 produces an infinite sequence in base 10. So assuming you can have infinite moves, then yes, you can access any real number. But we're in Minecraft, which is coded in Java, where numbers are processed in 64-bit floating point format. And it's interesting to point out that the precision of calculations actually gets worse the farther you are from the origin of your world. The most precise value you can reasonably expect in Minecraft is a binary decimal with 52 bits. So that is a maximum of 52 moves to obtain any precision with minecarts. Trying to perform these moves by hand gets a bit tricky because our squishy brains can easily forget where we're at in the sequence. So ideally we would make a machine that can execute the moves automatically. The rail curving technique has two steps. The curving, and then the straightening. We can't just have the rail flipping back and forth because we need to reset the lateral position of the minecart in order to execute the same move twice. This is much easier to design with pistons because we can access all of these moves depending on which pistons we activate. Here is some compact wiring that enables us to curve left or right followed by the reset maneuver in quick succession. And here is a simple storage based ROM that allows us to encode the sequence using the difference between stackable and unstackable items to represent our bits. All we need to do is place down the minecart Start the clock, and let the machine do its thing. So you can see that the different items get read out into these different rail lines, which activate the various sides of the machine that curve the rails each way. There we go, it just finished. And the final alignment, exactly 0.8. Well, 0.8 within the precision of Minecraft's unit system. So now we get to the final secret question of, what is the point of doing this at all in the first place? After all, I'm an engineer, not a mathematician. Why should I care about mathematical curiosities? Well, I wanted to make a gun that shoots arrows where the player is looking. And even though in my creative world I can fly around and teleport entities to the exact positions that I want, I needed to consider how a person playing in Survivor would be able to replicate these finely tuned alignments. And so I needed to solve an obscure mathematical problem to figure out the optimal approach. I think this touches on a more general problem of how mass is perceived, the figurative question being why should I learn something I will never use? The utility of random curiosities don't become apparent until you encounter problems in the wild which fit into those niches. The more mass problems you see, the more likely you are to recognize a solution when you encounter a problem. The Orbital Strike Cannon was born from my brain recognizing that the motion of entities is governed by linear algebra. The technology that enabled aimable cannons was born from my experience in optics and recognizing that wind charges using the player's view angle creates a ray tracing problem with reflections and explosions forming unique dynamics I would need to model. The more you educate yourself, the less you'll find complex problems bewildering, as your brain will start to recognize patterns and enable you to imagine a goal you can work towards. So that's it for this video. If you like my more scientific content, be sure to leave a like and comment down below, as these types of videos have a tendency to kind of ding in performance for the work I put in. Any help would be greatly appreciated. In the meantime, I need to finish off this machine gun and get it ready for my next video. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.